Uh, the first one is a difference quotient to the second power. So I'm not going to actually do the difference quotient. I'm going to do the derivative. So it's 2x squared plus 7x. There is a, a shortcut to this instead of doing this difference quotient. So you do this power times that number. So 2 times 2, that's going to give me 4x. Then you subtract 1 from the exponent. So that's going to be 4x to the first. Then, what number is in front of the x squared? There's a 2 in front of the x squared. That's going to give me a plus 2h. Then, then, this is just going to turn to 7, plus 7. So 4x plus 2h plus 7. 4x plus 2h plus 7. Again, I'm not going to do it the long way. 4x minus 15, difference quotient. Basically, all it's asking is what's the slope of that line? So that answer is just 4. So let me do another one so you have an idea of how to do the more difficult version and the easy version. So the more difficult version, like number one, would be something like 5x squared plus 7x plus 9. And I want to implement the difference quotient on that. So 2 times 5 is 10x. The 5 is in front of the x squared, so that's going to be plus 5h. And then this just goes to 7. Who cares about that? You're done. One like number two, that's 4x minus 15. If I had 35x minus 937, the difference quotient to that would just be 35. <clears throat> All right, so they have the cube root graph, they have the cube root graph, and then they have me with the 7 in front of the cube root. That is a vertical stretch of a factor of 7. Vertical stretch of a factor of 7. Square, square graph, x squared, x squared. They have me do something to that, so it's x minus 2. X minus 2 squared. Whatever's inside is going to be the opposite and right left. So it looks like it goes left, but it's the opposite of your intuition. So it actually goes right two units. Two units to the right. A. Number five, it's of X squared, and then they put a negative out front. So right there, that's going to be an X reflection. So a reflection over the Y axis, no. Uh, reflection across the X axis, yeah. A reflection across the X axis, yeah. A reflection across the X axis, that's good. And then it goes left six. So, translation, six units to the left, it's going to be choice A. Not to the right, not to the right. It's the opposite when it's inside the, the quantifier. Notice, this six is not inside the quantifier. That's just going to be a vertical stretch by a scale factor of six. <clears throat> so, that's a vertical shrinking by one-fifth. So, it can't be a stretch, it can't be a stretch. And then, that there six is six units down. Six units down. So it's going to be choice D. Vertical shrinking, factor of one-fifth. Translation, six units down. This here's an absolute value. Absolute value with a narrow. So it's kind of tough to see. I'm going to try to zoom in on this as much as I can. So it looks like it was shifted down one. Nope, it says down two over here. So it was shifted down two. So it's either going to be this one or this one. And it's very narrow. So the very narrow one is going to be the one with the 9 in front of it. If it were 1 9th, that's what I would call a fat bottom girl. It would go up 1, right 9, and be very wide. Up 1, left 9. It would be very wide. It would be a fat bottom girl if it were 1 9th. Absolute value of x minus 2. But because it's narrow, because it's narrow, it's uh, got the 9 in front of it. It's got the 9 in front of it. Describe the transformation. So it seems to have gone left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it went left eight. And then it went up. One, two, three, four, five. And it's a square root function. So it's going to be the square root of opposite x plus eight plus five. Opposite, same with the radical function. And we're just going to find this one over here. Plus eight plus five. And that's choice D. And this one's upside down. All they want me to do is find the domain that it is continuous. So there's no holes or anything. So the domain starts at the x value of 3. Remember, x comes before y. D comes before r. So the domain is going to be all the x values. So the x value starts at 3 and goes to the right forever. And to the right forever is po uh, positive infinity. So it starts at closed circle 3. That's going to be a bracket 3. And it ends at forever. So bracket 3 infinity is choice A. Number 11, they want to know what it's symmetric about. So 5x squared plus 5, if I were to graph it, 
it would have a vertex at zero five. And then it would be very skinny, but it would be symmetric about the Y axis. Y axis only, Y axis only. <clears throat> X axis, Y axis, so, or origin. So notice, notice it's to the third and to the first. That means it is odd. An odd function is symmetric with respect to the origin. An odd function is symmetric with respect to the origin. So that one would be origin only. That one would be origin only. Determine if the graph is symmetric to the x-axis, y-axis, or origin. So that there is to the fourth power. That is to the first power. So that's neither. Even or odd. That's neither. So that's not going to have any symmetry. None of these. So what I should do first is plug negative 3 into both of them. It doesn't have a, 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 an of, it's got a plus. So I can actually do the arithmetic pretty basically. So I plug the negative three into the x here. I plug the negative three into the x over there. That's gonna give me negative three plus two, which is negative one. That's gonna give me four minus three, that's one. And they want me to add them. That's what the plus means, add them. So negative one plus one is gonna give me a zero. It's gonna give me a zero. Number 15. Again, I should plug in the negative two to both items. I should plug the negative two into both items. Write them down and then subtract whatever those items are. So I'm going to put negative 2 in the 4x squared minus 2. So 4, parentheses, type in the negative 2 squared minus 2. It equals, so that's 14. I'm going to write that down. So f is 14 when I plug in negative 2. Plug in negative 2 over here, that's going to be negative 2 minus 3. That's going to give me negative 5. Now remember, they want me to subtract these. So it's going to be 14 minus negative 5. Be woke. That's 19. 14 minus negative 5. 19. Now they want me to multiply them. They want me to multiply them. So instead of foiling this times this, I'm going to plug in the 2 first. So 2 minus 6. That's going to give me negative 4. Now i got to plug the 2 into this one. So I'm going to be careful. I'm going to be diligent with the calculator. Don't mess it up. Don't be proud. So that's a negative 3, open parentheses, throw in the 2, close parentheses, squared, plus 11, open parentheses, 2, close parentheses, minus 7, 3. So now they want me to multiply these. So that's going to be negative 12. Not that difficult, not that involved. Number 17. <coughs> Notice that's not a multiply. That's what we call a fog. F of G of 3. So that means I'm going to put the 3 into the G first. I'm going to put the 3 into the G. Be woke. This one's kind of a tricky one. So negative 3. Open parentheses. 3. Close parentheses squared. Minus 7. Parentheses. 3. Close parentheses. Plus 5. Now that's negative 43. Here's what I do with that negative 43. Because of the notation. The of notation. That open circle notation, I take that negative 43 and I now put it into the F, which is furthest away from the number. I put the 3 into the G, I got negative 43. Now I put that number into the F. I put that result into the F. Again, let's use the calculator. Let's not be too proud. Let's try to get all these right that we can. That's negative 8, parentheses, negative 43, close parentheses, plus 5. 349, and there it is. Another one. This is Goff. G of F of 13. So I have to put the 13 into the F function first. So that's going to be 13 minus 3 over 2. Again, I don't trust a lot of us in here with our arithmetic, so I want to hit the fraction button. I'm going to put the 13 minus 3 over 2. That's going to generate the answer 5. That's not the total answer. So I have that 5. Now I take that 5 and I have to plug it into G. So that's going to be 3 times 5 plus 1. 15 plus 1 is 16. All right, tables, tables. Some of us like dealing with these tables. They're not that bad. So they want me to find F of F of 7. So F of 7 is 8. Then I take that 8 and I throw it back into F. F of 8 is 37. F of G of 2. 
Remember, you want to do the one closest first. So G of 2 is 3. So then I take that 3 and I throw it over here. F of 3 is 6. Tables go pretty quick. It's like observ observational skills. G of F of 2. That's that open circle of. I want to put the 2 and the F first. So F of 2 is 3. Then I take that 3 and I throw it in the G. G of 3 is 5. F of negative 3. Is negative 3 smaller than negative 1? The answer to that is yes. So that means I'm going to plug negative 3 into the top equation. So 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Is negative 6 less than 6? Yes, it is. So I'm going to take that negative 6 and I'm going to plug it in to the top equation. Because that's where it works. 8 times negative 6 plus 1. Negative 47. Lo and behold, there it is. Six. Six less than zero? Oh, hell no. Is six between zero and five? Oh, no. Is six bigger than five? Yes. So then I just plug six into X, and that's just going to give me six. That's it. Number 25, number 25. This one, no numbers, no numbers. So you gotta actually do the abstract algebra. And they want me to put F into G. They want me to put F, this big one, into G, this binomial. So G is two times X minus eight. But they don't want me to put X in there, they want me to put F in there. So I'm gonna put in the four X squared plus two X plus seven. And then implement the distributive property. That's 8x squared. That's plus 4x. Plus 14 minus 8. I don't know what 14 minus 8 is off the top of my head. I think it's 6. So that's going to be 8x squared plus 4x plus 6. And that would be choice A. A lot of calculations, a lot of arithmetic with this, this type of problem. So 26. Again, they want me to put G in the F. So I'm going to put G in the F. So I'm going to put G inside of that square root. So it's the square root of something plus 10. And that something is 8x minus 14. 8x minus 14 plus 10. That's going to give me the square root of 8x minus 4. Now, I'm thinking I might be dumb, but then again, I might not. Notice they got a leading coefficient in front of some of these. So they're going to want me to do a little bit of more work. They're going to want me to hustle a little bit. So I can factor a 4 out of 8x minus 4. So I can rewrite this as the square root of 4 